Hello everyone. The title of today's episode is The Mystic's Abode. And we're not really looking at this substantially, but let us see that when the poet speaks, he is revealing the shapes of novelty. The mystic, for me personally, began when I was a kid and uh, let me say it like this, when I was young, uh, very young, you know, I don't know, maybe like nine-ish or something, when something would disappoint me or whatever it was, uh, I would... When I would get upset, I would just, when I see, I saw that something wouldn't go my way, I would just go sit in my room and I would just close the door in pitch black darkness and just lie in my bed, you know? And I just wonder why, why is it like this? This is ridiculous. Now, during that time, years, uh, I think a few years after that, I, my uncle had this game in Iran. I was living in Iran that, that, at that time. And my uncle had this, um, what do you call it? He was developing this game, right? And he, for the first time, he, he said the name of one of the characters, and he said, it's Mystique, you know? And I was like, oh, Mystique, you know? What, a, what an interesting, you know, name, you know? And I, I remember looking at the letters he had in, in, on that screen, on the screen of that game, the word Mys, M-Y-S-T-I-C. Perhaps the best, one of the most beautiful words, I, uh, beautiful words I've seen. Now, I remember that word stood with me, and I liked mystic because I also liked the concept of a mist. So when I said mystic, it's as if there, it was someone who knew the mist, you know, something like that. Uh, now, <laughs> years later, to a totally indirect manner, I got introduced to the concept of the mystic as one who is the lover of the unknown. So when I kind of looked at how my ideology was growing in this existence, I began to see it's a... Uh, we love each other so much that we kind of forget where we are heading. That means is we must always have an ability to acknowledge the greater potentials of the system. And our system is very interestingly a cosmic system. So when I see that, I, I see the internet is there, and wow, that's an amazing leap of technology that made the nervous system uh, for the world in regards to information, you know, and what the globalization has done so far. But we see that the mystic is, it, it's as if when I, when I saw when I looked around, I saw that it's as if we are in a cosmic system too. That we don't have to only see it in boxes and call it computers. We can see that we are within a system of happening and occurrence. Now, because we can't linearize it, we begin to pay attention to words, worlds that are linear. But when we look at why we're looking at it linearly, uh, we see that it's because the language we have used so far in our communication has built a certainty and rationality. So it's as if all men are in a sense and are using language it's a technology it's a consciousness technology it's how life is expressing do you see so you need to open the cosmic scale you know not and that doesn't mean you're as fat as the cosmos it's just, <laughs> it just means you know as fat as the cosmos on a scale but it, it just means that you are the absolute ability of this moment of existence, of this moment of experience which you are now, which is an existential being. So when I look at self-awareness, I am simply looking at all concepts in the manner that there's either existence and non-existence. And if there's existence, uh, in, in, in existence, there is chaos and order, and that is simply it. And just, just at this chaos and order can translate into movement or, and noise, or it could be stillness and silence. But in, it, in the absolute form, it's as if non-existence is always there beyond existence is self-inquiry. 
So the mystic becomes the lover of the unknown to begin to learn from his own experience. So the caterpillar was a mystic. It began to go in a cocoon. What do, what do yogis and meditators do? They go in, in, a, in a cocoon, but they go in their experience making it silent and still. And so we are not bound by reality. We are the one who's seeing it real. But when we say, where is this who? Who is the seer? We begin to find this unborn, omniscient, existential observance that never needed history, but it still knows it's here. Intuition is one of the gifts of a biology, biological being, meaning that you're biologically, I mean, don't see yourself in, in, in a category, rather see yourself in the cosmos. Of course, these are just words, and I, I always realize that when I speak, when the words leave my mouth, they are no longer mine to some degree because everyone has their own unique interpretation of what the words mean to themselves. So it's as if my, my talk by every person being heard is a new talk because the receiver of the words is being a new source of intelligence. So it's as if the artistry is infinite in how we are always uh, basking in the light of all the torches that we carry, culture, individuality, uniqueness, these are all torches and they have a light, but their light is a collective light, meaning that individual intentions in their self-awareness to what they are become very absolute collective attentions intention meaning that it's as if that moment where you're inquiring who am I so you're like why am I why am why am I associated with myself as I right you know it's like it's like someone asks you who did this people some people probably in this life have gone I you know they have just said I you know but when you look at it we choose the symbol based on how much we are comfortable. But when we see who is choosing it, it is always the inspiration of all that is present within your moment of experience. So we are visualizing bodies and it's in an instant we are the clarity of just how simplicity was the roots of all branches of chaos. And uh, all branches of complexity. What Mr. Within likes to see be present in seven to ten years from now. Is a comfort, an existential comfort for every human being to be able to express themselves in any way regardless of the color of the ideology. You know, thank God, right now, humanity, based on the efforts of great leaders in the past, is, uh, is acknowledging beyond color, as if we're loving each other regardless of sh our, who we are or where we're from, you know? That's a beautiful thing when you see it in a species, but the species is going to such bond, bonds beyond even it, no, it knows. Trust me, humanity is just getting better. That means the minute we begin to allow ability and in a very healthy way and in a clear way just communicate and see that truth was our engagement with all that is present to us. The mystic is comfortable to, to have a self-inquiry beyond space and time and in doing so explores the absolute experience. He finds out what's actually here. And this means that it is okay to wonder of how there is manifestation in this world. It is okay to not just constantly be under a banner you don't understand, you know, whether it's religious or scientific, 
but to uh, see why you, are you here. You have to have that inner effort, uh, that that origin of awareness within you that's just like, all right, I'm present here. I'm a unique sense of DNA. Do you know what I mean? We must look in the eyes of each other and see the vision of humanity being the smile of now. For some men have seen truth. Be a beautiful smile in the mirror, but others want to reintroduce the world to itself. Because how the world is communicated is suggesting the bounds of your definition for the image you are accepting as real. The minute we say there's something real and unreal, we are calling an aspect of our direct experience unreal. And it's as if we're putting a blindfold on. Everything is real. Any idea is real. But it is real to the being who's aware of reality, not to the being who's still looking at the letters. Let me say it like this. You know how we opened up the atom? Imagine like that's just like taking up a word and looking at the letters. And when you take up a word and you look at the letters, you begin to see all, all these letters, all these possibilities of words. You begin to see those four letters, for example. You're all, oh my God, you see so much. You know, you see these four forces. But at the same time, the seer knows beyond it, what it's seeing because it can decide beyond it. We have this unique ability of hearing assimilating the information like in other words understanding and then communicating when you hear someone say something and of course uh, in my life I've experienced uh, the beauty of the silence that is found in the solitude of nature and meaning that when you go for long periods and just absolute silence it's not really silent your attention begins to become focused to the whole environment so you get this hyper focus to, it's like to the stable sense of orientation that is very selfless. And as you're there, you begin to see that the ideology is only there based on how you're approaching it. But the only way you could self inquire the only way you could approach it is because you're a multidimensional being. That is how there's evolution. What that means is where we are evolving to and where we are now is suggesting multidimensional presence. Where we have been is just from the present. But where we will be is from a combination of what is here before and what is here, in a sense, after, through an integrative collapse of streams leading to a greater ocean of, let's say, cosmic revelation. Ignorance begins when you speak. Because the minute you speak, you see that language is based on thingness. It's based on something. So, what that means is, if the word, if, if what I'm looking at is not a word in the dictionary, it's very hard for me to communicate it. So that is when poetry begins to do it, because it begins to open the realms to metaphoric, uh, how do I say it, rites of passage. <laughs> We are all what we can be and what we are. So first begin to see many people are seeking an ambition, a sense of purpose, right? People are like, gosh, everyone's doing something. What should I do? I need to have a purpose. You know, many people are like this, you know. Many people look, read Napoleon's biography and are like, gosh, I'm going to be Napoleon. <laughs> so many people read that, but they realize that intensity was relevant to the life of that being. The intensity of experience that is relevant to the life of you cannot come from an external search. It must come from an internal search. That is why Mr. Within is emphasizing, find Mr. Within. Find that intelligence behind your eyes. See what it is. Be comfortable to explore, for why else would you be here? Why would imagination be terra incognita? Well, it's just there to be explored, you know? And I'm pretty sure Columbus would agree, and every explorer known to man would agree. That in exploration, the world is stretched. Meaning that unconsciously, the universe is always expanding, but what is society and what is man and who we are, how we're acknowledging uh, each other, even how we're bringing languages through conscious forms, we begin to see 
Uncon- uh, the unconscious wisdom, knowledge is always beyond man. Do you see? Like the knower is always beyond form, but the form is always inspired by the knower because the form is conscious. So when the form is conscious, I mean, when we see the difference between a bench and let's say a human being, the human being has a self-awareness. That means when you go in the mirror, you can recognize yourself. So you also recognize how you are present. And in this presence, you also acknowledge how you're temporal. Everyone should acknowledge this. You are a temporal being. That means we all die. So be comfortable with day and with death and begin to see that it is simply a passage, a transition. A, pr- a transition that is all spiraling back into the present moment. That means the awareness to life is alive regardless of how much man was like, I'm a body that's alive, you know. Hey, buddy, I'm a body that's alive. No, you are a cosmos that is alive. And the body is present in the cosmos. So if those stars could come down here and say, speak, they'd be like, hey, humanity, before you can really com- uh, speak the language of starlight, you must first become aware of the nature of light and you will see that it is not a language. It is not through our duality that we shall touch the stars. It is through our non-duality that we shall remember we have always been the glow of, ascent, of, of, glow of existence. We have always been the glow of existence. Take an existential responsibility, you know. For a lot of kids, their parents are like, oh, you got to take, take, take some responsibility, you know. Do something, take some responsibility. Many parents have this approach, right? So we must begin to see that responsibility they're taking, the max out is not just like just maintaining so much, right? maintaining like let's say 10 businesses or something, and being a CEO of, of let's say 10 businesses, but it's rather seeing That in your approach to wisdom, there is no one who is ever wise. It is how the present moment can communicate sincerely, naturally, and as it is. Many of us are thinking we are names, we are ideas. But no, you are life. That word is your direct experience. Your direct experience is where every concept known to man is being experienced. Meaning that all ideology is direct experience. It will come down on the truth of everything. Every concept is direct experience. And this direct experience is not unified through ideology. It it is when the ideology dissolves. It is how in Persian tales, the the word for phoenix is Seymour. And C in in, in Persian means 30. It means the number 30. And in, in, in Persian, in, in Persian, you know, poetic literature, there is there's there's tales where they say this: uh, all the birds in the world be, in the world began to search for this phoenix, and in doing so, in this search, so many of them left. So many of them did, did not believe, did not even approach. They went back to their lives. But out of all these thirty were left, and this thirty carried on with an intention. Out of all the words, these thirty, and all these thirty, at the end of it, began to realize that together they are the phoenix. Together they are the symbol. Meaning that our greater presence is in our awareness that we are always the unity. So hum- only the human idea needs to be convinced. Before that you are omniscient knowing. You know what I mean? The knower is important to be aware of. So what that means is taking that existential responsibility will come down to taking existential responsibility for time and space in your experience. You'd be like, oh my God, even though someone taught me time, no one, you know, it's like no one could ever really tell me what I could explore about time and space on my own. What that means is genius sometimes needs silence and solitude to do its work. Because it is trusting the flow of the idea. And the flow of the idea must come from an awareness that is not an, the idea. Do you know what I mean? So meaning that uh, all concepts of, let's say, stigmatic imagery, you know, let's say all dark imagery of dark beings, you know, all imagery of good beings, all of these are suggestive of how everything is originating in your experience. There is a self-reflective aspect. When you look at people and you look, look at that person and you're like, oh, 
uh, you know, <laughs> this person is a, uh, is a sense of self, I'm a sense of self, let these sense of selves try to communicate, you know. But we don't need to be artificially intelligent before even artificial intelligence has been introduced technologically, you know, meaning that we need to be who we are comfortably, so when you are with who you are, begin with trust. Don't, don't, if you don't trust people, that's terrible because that means you don't trust parts of your experience. Saying that, oh, that's imagination, I don't know what thought is, no, I don't want to look at thought, you know, oh, forget about it, I'm just this, you know, I'm just what everyone else is saying because it's so comfortable and we can talk about it and yeah, I like it, you know. Well, you know, you could, you could play with conditioning as much as you want, but Mr. Within is saying it is time to bring such a self-awareness to every human being that they become the collective self-awareness, which is a selfness uh, initiative for humanity's betterment. We must advance to loving community. Or how else are we, is, are we gonna do it? You know what I mean? If, if we start all fighting and hating, how else are we gonna get together to great, great, build great stuff, you know? It's as if the inventors of the future will no longer want to be individual inventors. They want to have everybody's engagement. They want to, as together as this great mind, as an enlightened mind to communicate. Meaning that in our trust, we let go of our face to see that starlight never needed to be shaped. Meaning that even though there is passage, in regards to the transition of existential form, the awareness never changed. It's as if who is it that is aware of all the things you've been through so far? It is you. Do you see? It is a self-awareness that's originating from you. And it's as if, like, you don't even need to think about responsibility and stuff. It's just like the, when the lion stretches, when the lion begins to look in the pond and sees that the wool is, is got bullshit, you know? It's like who it thought, the ability, everything it saw about its reality is bullshit. It begins to go to that point where there is nothing. And in that nothingness, it gives itself the ability to, to envision a new reality. And when you envision it, it's as if the old one becomes irrelevant. You are a new inspiration because your moment is, is always introducing new things to you. Meaning that we are dancing in the love of the exploration of form. And we're doing it also very formlessly. We want all beings to begin to guide one another to an effort that is coming not based on logically thinking that's good to do but from just knowing you know it's just like how it's like it's the family of humanity man it's just like you know just like how you like your family members you see it's another human being you it's as you you love the species so much you're not willing to disturb the species that is the love of humanity that you see it's fine, okay, sure, you had a tough life, but regardless of whatever toughness, there is no need to disturb others. Because the children of ch our children's children will be living in a world, let's say 7,000, 10,000 years from now, that there is no sign of disturbance. There is totally an understanding of chaos and order. You know, there's fluctuation and there's the growth of knowledge, both from a totally profound way of acknowledging good and bad, but there is, it's, it's how would I say it? It's as if there would be peace. Every being would know where it is as a cosmic thing. And when that consciousness comes to man, it's as if we drop the pens. We drop the regulations and the laws or having to have laws and we trust the world as it is for we are from the world. Meaning that when, when you kiss the earth, You have also kissed yourself back. Meaning, the lovers of existence began within one another. And so we could be on the edge of the roof of some Venetian building right now at night. And there's no light but the light of the moon and looking down at just a canal 
They're just an empty canal and just wondering what does life mean? And we would then look beside us and find our lover and we'd see that it is of union. That when life kiss, kisses her, her lips will remember eternity. We wouldn't need numbers to communicate. We would be guided by the inspiration of our harmony. That means that the greatest thing that communities and the human being can do, that human being can do is to co-create with a very clear vision and an absolute effort. And together, it's, there needs to be building. Do you know what I mean? Communities must become productive. And not productive in regards to, oh, we need to, you know, have a certain outcome or something, you know. But rather, we want ideas to become great. Meaning that, let's say, one kid has an idea of time and space in one part of the neighborhood. One kid has another idea of time and space in another type of neighborhood. Another kid has a view. Another kid has a view. And they all come together. And through the union that these uh, very deep concepts have, they begin exploring, let's say the nature of what reality can be and together become a very honest and co-creative effort just like how explore, explorers are. Explorers never uh, uh, are, are cool to one another because they're exploring, they're exploring together. It's only when conditions come into play that explorers don't become explorers anymore. Exploration is done for all and that is the beauty, trust me. I was a rock collector when I was very young, you know, in my grandmother's backyard, and I would just the wonder of finding a new shape, a new form. And later on I realized, wow, what are ideas but a form too we can reveal. For when, when there was a moment when I read, I opened up this book on Tibetan Buddhism, and it was called The Clear Mirror. And in this book, I began to see the concept of a treasure revealer and a treasure revealer that is not seeking physical treasure. A treasure revealer that is seeking what is within. Meaning understanding, greater self-awareness, greater senses of knowing not based on dualistic con conditions where you think you can be deceived. When you feel you can be deceived, when you feel there's deception there, you are creating a possibility for someone to be deceived. Sometimes, you know, just like how you some movies, you go past by and you're like, I'm probably not going to ever watch that movie. You know what I mean? Well, it's fine. You don't have to watch that movie. Meaning that sometimes you don't need to always uh, create an enemy behind the door. You need to trust your experience. You need to trust who you are. And even though you go for that kiss, You will see that your moment and all that is within your moment she would kiss you back. Do not surrender to social dynamics that are interpreted by who God knows who knows what, you know. We are not just the possibility, we are also the impossibility. And we must explore time and space together in a manner where all our efforts are leading towards the greater vision of humanity.
for the love of all that we are, we become the love of all that we can be. Much blessings in Namaste.